Gastroenterology has been a leading specialty in Oxford since the 1950s, but in 2010, a new unit opened here at the John Radcliffe Hospital. Headed by Professor Fiona Powery, the Translational Gastroenterology Unit is one of the leading facilities of its kind in Europe and provides care for inflammatory bowel disease, nutrition, hepatobiliary disease and other related disorders. Helen was diagnosed with Crohn's, a type of inflammatory bowel disease, when she was just 20 years old. When you hear that you've got a disease, a named disease, you immediately think the worst. Crohn's disease, it must be bad, it's got a name. The doctor said, you'll be okay, it's not life-threatening, unless you're very young or very old. But at the time, oh, I remember I was, I was quite traumatised. Hi, Nathan, how's I'm here to see Lydia, Lydia White. But life became a daily struggle. You go to the toilet so very often, you bleed a lot. It's really, really tiring. You have to be very aware of your diet, you have to be very careful what you eat. You have to be careful of where you go. I've had to get off trains before because there's been no toilet on them and I need to go to the toilet and I need to go now. Although there are a number of drugs and treatments for inflammatory bowel disease, they don't work for everyone. A hospital has been a massive part of my life for the last 20 odd years, backwards and forwards, constantly, operation after operation, drug after drug after drug, to try and beat this disease. It's frustrating, it's depressing, and you just feel so low. The Translational Gastroenterology Unit was founded to improve patient outcomes by integrating the clinicians responsible for treating patients with the researchers involved in trying to understand the basic science of gastrointestinal diseases, moving from the bench to the bedside and back again. One of the most exciting areas of gastroenterology in Oxford is the integration between science, clinical trials and patient care because patient care has to be informed by what goes on in clinical trials, and clinical trials have to be based on what goes in the laboratory. What's unique in Oxford is that we have all of those three things together in the same place, and that brings frontline care to our patients. Building on Professor Powery's groundbreaking work into the mechanisms of inflammation, the unit uses basic science to understand the cause of gastrointestinal illnesses. They use a variety of experimental techniques looking at individual cells and also cells within the context of tissues to understand why the immune system uh, doesn't function properly in these diseases and we can take this information uh, and then use it to generate better treatments for clinical trials. A decade ago steroids would be the one treatment and it would work in some patients, it would not work in other patients for whatever reason. We try to investigate through basic science why these patients will not respond to the conventional therapeutics and we can actually deliver something more targeted um, to fight this disease. The unit's state-of-the-art laboratories are next to the clinical trials facility. Today it runs over 15 trials in the hope of developing new drugs, devices and treatments. The facility is part of a wider network of experiments that are happening in hospitals across the Thames Valley region. It was during a consultation at the John Radcliffe Hospital that Helen was told about a new trial that could help her. The idea was that the stem cell transplant would take place. They would harvest my own stem cells then they would wipe out my immune system completely through chemotherapy. When I had no immune system left whatsoever, then they would put my stem cells back in without the rogue Crohn's gene. Helen was given a series of tests to assess her suitability for the trial. When she was given the go-ahead, her decision to take part was instant. He told me to go away and think about it. It took me a about 10 seconds, it was a complete no-brainer. I had no other option, as I saw it anyway. I didn't want to go through yet more failed operations, really. The transplant was a success, but Helen's still in the early stages of a five-year trial. This is my second year now, and I come back to the John Radcliffe every six weeks, and most visits are fairly straightforward. People are fantastic. 
everybody is just so friendly, they're so accommodating, they do bloods, check my pulse, my blood pressure, and Dr. Travis usually has a poke about to see what's going on in my stomach. Yes, um, it doesn't look as if there's active inflammation there. In many cases, research studies rely upon patients donating blood samples or biopsies taken at endoscopy. So an endoscopy is, is a method where we use a flexible tube with a camera uh, in order to examine the gut uh, and see how much inflammation is present and also enables to take us to take biopsies uh, of the gut to look at later under microscopes. It's a routine part of clinical practice, but we also use it within clinical trials to monitor the response to the treatments that we're using. Pathology also plays an important part in guiding effective treatment. Cellular pathology is the diagnosis of diseases at the cellular level. Specimens are sent to the lab and we examine them down the microscope and we are able after the start of treatment to monitor the improvement of the disease. In Helen's case, after the treatment, we can monitor her progress both symptomatically and down the microscope to see whether the cells are responding to the treatment. It's important to understand that the treatments may not make you better in a clinical trial, but the understanding that comes from that uh, has been absolutely crucial in generating new treatments and in allowing us to understand these diseases better so that we can treat people better in the future. Most treatments that have recently been tested in the clinical trials facility aren't yet on general release, but as soon as they are, they'll be put into practice here on the gastroenterology ward. It's really exciting to think that clinical trials just around the corner are going to have a massive impact on patient care in the future, particularly on the ward, and that we're going to be able to implement that for future patients, and that's really exciting. In the meantime, patients are benefiting from the many medical discoveries that are being used and are changing the lives of patients every day. Patients have triggered the actual um, injection before and it's quite a lot of drug to spill on the floor. Ian has had Crohn's disease for nearly 30 years. He's tried numerous treatments, but few have improved his condition. Today he's taking a drug called Adalimumab for the first time. It's the result of a clinical trial performed more than a decade ago. I started a new drug today, um, which they seem very, very hopeful about, uh, Dr Travis has said that it's got very good results um, and the nurses seem to think that it, will, it could just change my life. And it's been more than two years since Helen's stem cell transplant and her life has improved dramatically. This trial that I'm on has made a massive difference to my life, a huge difference. I have problems. I still have problems, I'm always going to have problems, but I'm not in that constant pain. Honestly, I can't tell you how much better I am. I'm not, not quite normal, but I'm getting there. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> With the help of patients like Helen, the unit is making great strides in the fight against gastrointestinal illnesses. We've got a new vaccine against viruses for liver disease. We've got a new treatment for Crohn's disease. We've led the way internationally for a new way of assessing the severity of ulcerative colitis. So we're making real advances in all of these areas and that depends on a team effort, all of us working together, doctors, nurses, and most of all, our patients to make this happen. For more information on whether a clinical trial may be suitable for you, please email gastrotrialsinquiries at ouh.nhs.uk or call 01865 231 618.